Welcome into the Los Angeles Lakers Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. We got a lot to talk about in today's show. We got some trade rumors on OG and Anobi, and we have a big man, a stretch big out east that maybe the Los Angeles Lakers could be interested in. Trade rumors are heating up around him, according to Sham Sharanya. But first, we got to talk about the huge win the Los Angeles Lakers had last night in Madison Square Garden over the New York Knicks. The overtime win, 129-129. 23. LeBron James put together another masterclass of a performance at Madison Square Garden, one of his favorite places to play basketball. A triple double for the King 28 points, 10 rebounds, 11 assists. Anthony Davis was also sensational. Jericho Sims could not guard him. 27 points for AD, 9 rebounds. Rui Hachimura, we'll talk more about him in a second. But Russ off the bench, stuffed the stat sheet like he always does. Only had one turnover for Russ. Good game for him. When he decides to get downhill, he's still one of the best in the NBA. Hachimura, though, nine, 19 points, 9 rebounds. And he's already made a difference for this Los Angeles Lakers team. Last night in the game, what I liked about him, he had three different times where he had dribble pull-up jump shots that he knocked down. Two mid-range and a three-pointer as well. Also had a couple leak-out dunks. He just adds some size, athleticism, and lineup versatility that the Lakers so desperately need. And that's what he brings to this team. Last four games that he's played, I guess the first four games he's played for L.A., he's been pretty damn good. 13.3 points per game, almost six rebounds. He's been really efficient as well, 52.5% from the field. Three-point percentage is a little bit low, but I think that'll start to rise as he gets more games under his belt and continues to get wide open jumpers from a guy like LeBron James. The Lakers, they're a tough matchup for smaller teams. And with the New York Knicks without Mitchell Robinson last night, you saw guys like Bryant and Anthony Davis just take care of business against Jericho Sims and Isaiah Hartenstein. One of my bigger takeaways was how comfortable Anthony Davis looked out there. I thought the jump shot looked good for AD. He had that mid-range post-up shot whenever he wanted to, made a couple falling away jumpers. He was good around the rim. The Lakers showed you last night that when they play a team that's not nearly as talented as they are, they could take advantage of it and they did last night against the New York Knicks. I also like the game plan that they had. Shout out to Darvin Ham, forced Julius Randle into tough shots, and he made the Knicks be outside shooters, something that they could not connect on last night. Shout out to the Lakers. They looked good on TNT. Big primetime win in OT after the refs. We know what the refs did the other day. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because the trade deadline is about a week away. And I promise, I think the Lakers are going to make a trade and we're going to break it down as soon as it does. Subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash at Lakers TV. Lakers videos almost every single day on the latest Lakers news and rumors. Sub for Lakers dubs. Hit that big red button and help us get to 50,000 subs. The trade rumors are heating up surrounding L.A. We just said it a second ago, but the trade deadline's almost here, and that's when the juice really starts to rise. Chris Haynes says Rob Palenka still has another move or two up his sleeve. What could it possibly be? Well, to find out what it is, I think we need to look at first what the Lakers have in house. We know that when you make a trade, you got to match the salary. So the main trade assets that the Lakers have right now are pretty much salary fillers. Lonnie Walker still has some juice. He's been pretty good this year. Beverly, he's just a number next to a million dollar sign. That's $13 million you can make a trade for someone. Then Russell Westbrook, if they do decide to move off of Brody, they can use his $47 million cap. They also have a first round pick in 2027 and a first round pick in 2029. But Rob Polinka has said he doesn't feel the need to move those two picks unless it's netting them a superstar. Could that be happening? We'll let you know if it does. That's why you subscribe to the channel. We'll get to more trade juice coming up in a second. But first, I got to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Rocket Money. I love saving money. You love saving money. That's why I love Rocket Money. Go to rocketmoney.com slash NBA. Now, don't waste money. Use Rocket Money, an app where you can view all your subscriptions on one screen. Stay on top of upcoming bills, and I love that they'll cancel your unwanted subscriptions for you. You get to view all your subscriptions on one screen, and maybe you're like, why am I paying for Netflix and I'm paying for these other streaming services, and I don't even watch those. Well, Rocket Money will cancel those for you. I also love that they organize and optimize all of your finances. They cancel your unused subscriptions and keep track of monthly expenses. They also monitor events that affect your credit score. Well, if you're trying to improve your finance game, Rocket Money is the way to go. 
That is rocketmoney.com slash NBA now. We are proud to have them as a sponsor here on the Los Angeles Lakers Report by Chat Sports. And I promise you, you're going to love it. Just go to rocketmoney.com slash NBA now. OG Ananobi is the guy right now in the trade streets of the NBA that has the most juice surrounding him. There's rumors that the Raptors are looking for three first round picks. That's something the Los Angeles Lakers don't have, but they do have two unprotected first round picks. And I believe that would be enough to land a guy like OG Ananobi. Is Ananobi the player Robbie P would shell out the first round picks for? Let's take a deep dive into it. What do you get in a guy like OG Ananobi? You get a good score, a guy that plays his role and is really a superstar role player. Not a superstar, but a superstar role player. What do I mean by that? He's a superstar in his role. He plays defense. He rebounds the basketball. He steals the basketball. He plays defense, and he knocks down shots at an above-average clip. 17 points, the league leader in steals per game at 2.1, shoots 46% from the field, and almost 37% from downtown. Ananobi is the premier two-way player on the trade market right now. If you're able to slide him into the starting lineup, Next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis, that's a lineup that has some juice and I truly believe could contend in the Western Conference. But the question is, is Rob Palenka willing to shell out both of those unprotected first-round picks? Because that's what I think it is going to take if you want to get OG to go from Toronto to L.A. There's also reports out there that a mystery team offered three first-round picks for OG Ananobi. And if that were the case, I think he would have already been on said mystery team. But I think sometimes we need to realize that a first-round pick, all first-round picks aren't created equal. That's what I'm trying to say. You got unprotected first-round picks, and you got protected first-round picks. If someone offered three unprotected first-round picks for OG Ananobi, yes, that trade would already be done. But if you're only going to give them three protected first-round picks and those first-round picks are mid, as the kids like to say it, he would stay with the loss uh, with the Toronto Raptors, excuse me, and that is why he is still a part of Toronto. What about this trade idea, though? If you're the Lakers, I do believe you're going to have to give up both of those first-round picks. I think at minimum, one would have to be unprotected, then maybe a top three protected or a top five protected. But the higher the protections go, the lower the interest goes for Mazai Ujiri. So what about the Lakers get OG? They give the salary cap filler of Patrick Beverly. You get a young, solid piece in Lonnie Walker, and you get those two first-round picks. Would you, the Los Angeles Lakers report real one, trade two first-round picks for OG and Anope? If you decide that you think you could compete this year in the Western Conference, you do it. I also think that makes LeBron happy. And when LeBron is happy, the Lakers are happy. Because that means LeBron is going to stay a Laker. The championship window is slowly closing every single day. Trading for OG, it prolongs that window. Because that means LeBron is going to stay. Type T for trade, type P for pass. A new name to watch here on the channel is... Jalen McDaniels, the stretch 4-5 for the Charlotte Hornets. He's a pending restricted free agent, meaning that the Charlotte Hornets can match a contract if he does sign, opt to sign somewhere else in free agency. McDaniels has received significant interest, according to Sham Sharanya. And when you can get a 6-9, small uh excuse me power forward like McDaniels that shoots 33 percent from downtown, that's gonna draw interest from other teams. He's also getting up about 3.7 three-pointers per game. So this isn't a small sample size for McDaniels. He can protect the rim a little bit. He's a guy that's averaging a half a block a game. He's also giving you 1.1 steals per game. He's got switchability in the pick and roll. He can also score a little bit, 10.9 points per game and 4.9 rebounds. I'm a fan of McDaniels, but I'm not giving up juice, big juice for him. I think it I know this. It would cost much less than OG Ananobi, but it's a similar player to Rui Hachimura. I think that he's more of an interior player than H Hachimura is, while Hachimura is more of a wing, but they both excel inside the paint with the ability to knock down three-point shots, but their games are more inside out compared to outside. And good defender is McDaniels. I'd go after him. I mean, if Rob Polinka gets him for cheap, 
Why not? If you can get him for a couple of those second round picks, that makes your team deeper, it makes your team better, makes your team bigger, and it adds some three point shooting from the big man spot to where you could almost have AD at the five and McDaniels at the four, and McDaniels does some of that dirty work. Gives you more lineup versatility, more defensive versatility. I'm a fan of it, but I'm not giving up any premium picks or any of my big trade chips to go out and trade for Jalen McDaniels. But what do you think? Do you want Jalen McDaniels on the Los Angeles Lakers? I think it makes sense for the right price. Everything can go for the right price. McDaniels can sure be a Laker if he wants to. Type Y for yes, type N for no, and make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. We're almost at 50,000 subscribers, and our videos, they're awesome.